Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreamy, and on this video tutorial today, I'm going to show you how you can make over one of these $3, uh, this is from Dollar Tree Plus, but you can get this kind of a breadboard anywhere. Um, you can make it over into something really pretty and really meaningful. So, we are going to be talking about this verse a little bit, James 117. We're going to be talking about what does it mean to be good and how is God good. And uh, anyways, this isn't going to be a full-blown Christ in crafting. I just have some thoughts that I want to share with you. So as you are hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle all that good stuff. Okay, so of course, before I got started here today, I have been painting and I painted this. It, it said something on it about fall with this white Waverly chalk acrylic no prep paint from Walmart, okay, in white. Um, and then I sanded it with some really fine sandpaper and I took it outside and I gave it a quick clear, uh, a quick coat of this matte clear spray sealer. Why? If you've been watching for very long, I'm sure you're tired of me explaining this, but here's the deal. Wood, and even if it's this fiberboard or MDF or whatever this is, it's tricky to stencil on because what it wants to do is grab the medium, the chalk paste, pull it down deep into the pores, and then it wants to spread it all out. Like sometimes you'll see ladies with a lot of wrinkles around their lips, me included, where the lipstick is kind of bleeding out in those wrinkles. So that's kind of what it wants to do. And you can stop that by half from happening by spraying it with a clear matte sealer spray before you stencil. So that's what I did to get ready. I did not paint the back, but of course you definitely could if you want. Uh, so today we are going to be using a brand new stencil that I am in love with. Oh my goodness. This is such such a good stencil that can be used for so many different occasions, for seasons, for any time that you're talking about gifts or uh, being thankful. Um, you know, every holiday, every birthday, every anniversary, every new baby, every new job, every new, every everything like that you could use the stencil for. So it's James 117 and it says every good and perfect gift is from above. And, whoops, I have three or four other verses that I want to read and talk about it. But, okay, so this is brand spanking new. So first thing I need to do is I need to write on the back of it what it is so I know which side to put it, the stencil back on after it's clean. I cannot find my black Sharpie marker, and this gold is hard to see. It says gift. Okay, and then because it is brand new, brand, brand, brand new, never used, I'm definitely going to fuzz it really good. So I'm just going to take it off of the backing sheet and lay it on my tacky towel. You could also fuzz on a pair of jeans, on a t-shirt, on a low limp tea towel. Um, Dollar Tree has some of those dish mats that are like, uh, I don't know what they're called, but they have them for every season that are, you know, cute, where you would put your dishes after you wash them to dry. Those will work. This thing right here is called a tacky towel. It's not very expensive. It's great for fuzzing, and then this side is what you can pat your stencils fly with. So... I love it. I use this thing all the time. And sometimes it's good just to put your smaller projects on top of it while you're working on it. Oh my goodness, Bernadette is tuning in from Trinidad. Well, hey, how are you doing? That is a long way away from Atlanta, Georgia, which is about where I am. Okay, I'm gonna say that's buzzed good enough. All right, and I have to think about this. I think I want the handle to be going off to this side. And so, I am just going to fiddle with this for a minute. And I'm going to do some kind of a big bow. Um, yeah, that's good. 
pushing it down. Make sure it's sort of straight. Looks like it. Good enough. Okay, today I am using the brand new chalk paste colors from Magnolia DM. I am super excited. This one is my favorite. It's called Dusky Blue. You guys look at that color. It's awesome. We're going to use this one, which is called French Rose. Beautiful color. Um, and these are available now on the new product page on my website, which is magnoliadiy.com. I don't know if we're going to use this one, uh, but it is called Peachy Heen. Isn't that a cute name? And we're going to probably use a little bit of this one, which is called Vintage Sage. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with the words. And I'm going to do all of the words the same color, except I'm going to do good and perfect in this pink. So I'm going to put this on here because I can get started and start talking and then forget what I'm doing in a heartbeat. <laughs> Are you guys like that? And I want to remember what my plan here is. Probably got too much chalk paste on here, but anyways, okay. So I'm just going to push this chalk paste. Woo, I almost pushed it into that flower through the holes on my stencil. I've got way too much as usual. way too much. You know, one of the surprising things about working with chalk paste is really how little of it you have to use. It goes a long way. Okay. And then let's do the um, good and perfect part. And then this is going to be one of those stencils that's going to take a little bit longer to do. So I'm going to show you how you can pull your stencil up so that the chalk paste does not dry in the holes in your stencil while you're working on it. Because if you go too slow, you can sometimes pull up the chalk paste because basically it will dry in the stencil and then when you lift it up, um, it's disappointing. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And I'm gonna pull it up and then I'm just gonna gently lay it right back down. This blue color, you guys, it's fabulous. Oh my goodness. Okay. So lay that back down. And now, um, we're gonna think about what we're doing. I wanna do some of this sage color on the leaves and so forth. And then I want to do the flowers in pink, I think. Maybe we'll put a little bit of blue in the center of them. I don't know. And you might be wondering, why am I not using my paintbrush squeegees, which are so handy, and where are they? They are being redesigned to be even better, so they are not um, available right now, but they will be back before too long. So I'm just going to be careful and go slow and I'm not going to worry too much about it being perfect. Okay, I have a little bit of blue on my squeegee, so I'm just going to pull that off. Did I get more? stencil like this is like creating a piece of art because um, it has God's word on it. That's one good thing. But also you can do it a hundred different ways 
and depending on how you do it, you're going to get a completely different look. So I really like that. Um, I'm already thinking that I want to do a project on fabric where we paint uh, the colors. Okay, let's put a little blob of purple in the center of those two flowers. And then let's do the rest of it with the pink. Okay, and I'm going to use my finger just to move this blue around a little bit. And then, grab my squeegee. And I'm not going to worry too much if my flowers have uh, kind of blended colors. So as I was waiting for my paint to dry, I was looking at my Bible and, oh my gosh, there are so many different verses about God being good. And God saying, this is good. Um, so we're just going to talk about a few of them, just for fun. But know that there are lots more. I need another squeegee. I can pull off these big clumps. Okay. This is what that looks like. And I'm going to pull it off before it dries. Oh. Oh my goodness! Oh, it's stunning! Oh. Okay, I'm throwing this in my little tub of water over here. So it can just soak in some water until I can get out to the kitchen to wash it. I'm going to look through my ribbon stash tonight to see if I have something that I could put right here that would bring these three colors all together. So the green is called Vintage Sage. It's a brand new color. The pink is called French Rose, and the blue is Dusky Blue, and it's beautiful. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And um, this is like a, it's a um, breadboard kind of thing, but it can be a piece of art. It doesn't have to be something that you use necessarily in your kitchen. So let me just close my little pots of chalk paste up and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this first. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Oops, I have a hard time. All right, what do you think? Isn't that pretty? And you know what? Here's another idea. If I wanted, I could use parts of the stencil in the flowers to add more, like right here and right down here. And I could do that same blending thing. I think I probably will, but I would have to wait for it to be fully dry. Um, the reason why I got a pretty good stencil impression is because after I painted two coats of this white paint on my little board, I sanded it with some very fine sandpaper, and then I sprayed it. And that, that makes a huge difference, if you ask me. Okay, so let's look at this verse in my Bible. Um, this is not a full-on episode of Christ in Crafting, but it is one that I have prayed about, and um, I'm just going to do a very quick prayer. This is like a mini version of what we do on Sundays, and then we'll jump right in. Heavenly Father. You are good, Lord, and you give us good gifts because you love us, Lord. So I just pray today that we can see that, that we can experience that, that we can taste and know that you are good. Lord, uh, just give me the words that you want me to say to share the ideas that you would like me to share with the people who are watching now 
and in the future. And I, I love you, Lord. I praise you. And I just pray this in your precious son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Okay, so James 1.17. find it. My little tabs in my Bible are almost worn out, so I can hardly see what they say. Okay, so this is um, James 1.17, and what it says here and I took a picture of this page of my Bible, which I'll put in the comments, because there's so much good stuff in this. And um, I just want to mention that if you don't have a Bible that's written in a translation that you can understand, and maybe that doesn't have all these wonderful notes like this Life Application Study Bible does, let me know and I'd be glad to share a link to a place. I have nothing to do with it other than just wanting you to be able to have God's Word in your hands um, that sells these Bibles. This is a Life Application Study Bible. I've had it for over 20 years, I've written my life in it. It's my, it's my most valued possession uh, in terms of things, and it's in the New International Translation. Okay, so James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. So basically, God is good. Uh, all good things come from God. And he, here's a perspective on that. You know, sometimes we don't think that... <laughs> that the gifts or the things that God gives us are good because we just have a different perspective. We can't see things uh, from an internal perspective. We, we don't know really what's good for us, but our Heavenly Father does. Um, so every good and perfect gift is from God and He knows what is best for us, even if we would disagree. Um, and he does not change. He is not good one day and bad the next day. He does not give us one thing that is good and something that is bad the next. So that was the first verse, the one on this pretty little board that we did that I do think I'm going to add some more flowers from that stencil. Um, okay, the next one I want to talk about is Genesis, going way back to creation. It's the um, very first book of the Bible. And it's the first chapter. And in this chapter, I mean, if you want to read the whole chapter one, it's short, but it gives you the, the days of creation. And then in verse one, that chapter one, verse 31, um, after God was finished, he, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. So what God, who is good, made was good. And he saw that it was good after he created it. So that takes you way back to the beginning. Now let's go to the book of Psalms. Um, it's right here in the middle of the Old Testament, chapter 34. There are so many verses in the Bible about good. Um, so these are just a few. I didn't, these are just a few that sort of came into my head that would be good to read. Okay, chapter 34, verse eight, says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord is good, we can taste and see that just means experience him. Uh, experience him in a full way, and you will see that he is good. And then in Romans, which is a, a New Testament verse, Romans chapter 12, verse 8. Where are you, Romans?
Romans 12, verse 2, sorry. Oh, this is such a good verse. Okay, and it, it starts at 2. It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, which is fallen and full of sin and death, really, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, which just means spending time with your Heavenly Father, spending time in prayer, spending time in God's Word, spending time in fellowship with other believers, in worship, in church, you know, in your life. Um, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and don't be stuck in your old ways. And then it says, in the second part of this verse, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And um, testing and approving what God's will is, is basically, in my opinion, just telling us that um, if we don't know God, we won't be able to see him at work. We won't know what his will for us is. Um, so we need to renew our minds in him. And then we will be able to test and approve and know what his good and pleasing and perfect will for us is. Okay, and then I have one more verse from the book of Philippians, um, the first chapter, verse 5 to 6. Well, it's actually more six. Okay. It says, He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. He who began a good work in you is our good Heavenly Father who has a good plan for us. A plan, um, I'm so sorry about that. I was getting a phone call. Um, who has a good plan for our lives, not to harm us, um, but to give us a hope and a future. Uh, and before you were born, God already had the plan for your life. He, he is everywhere in all times, omnipresent, um, omnipotent. He knows everything, um, and it is good. You can trust him. Well, hey, Susie, yes, God is so good. Oh, my goodness, and your little cooking video you sent me was fabulous. I would like to share that if it's okay with you. Um, Vivian says she loves listening to me. Oh, well, thank you. I'm just sharing what God has put on my heart and what he is saying to me in these verses. So I invite you, anytime you hear anyone talking about God or about scripture, go look for yourself and see what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Don't just, you know, believe someone because they are quoting scripture. So the verses that I talked about today were James 1.17, Genesis 1, 31, Psalm 34, verse 8, Romans 12, 2, and Philippians 1, 6. And I'll write all that down in the um, in the comments. So uh, anyway, so that is what I wanted just to share with you. Just a quick reminder that every good and perfect gift is from above. So, I hope you like this project. If you would like to look at this stencil online on my website, or look at these new beautiful colors of chalk paste, just let me know and I'll be glad to get you a direct link so you don't have to go hunt them down. Um, don't hesitate to ask questions. Feel free to sprinkle. Take a second or two to look and see if you have liked and followed this page and if you've turned on your notifications. I know I say this every time, but do a this or a this or say something to me. And those encourage Facebook to, sh to show you that I'm still alive and breathing and crafting every day. Um, anyways, Dixie says it's a very lovely breadboard. Thank you. Yes, Debbie, I'll get you the new colors. There are four. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This dusky blue and the sage and this French rose are fabulous. I haven't tried the peachy keen yet, but I know it's going to be fabulous too. So, let's see. Dixie, I'll get you the link. 
Uh, Lisa says the new colors are beautiful. I think so too. I love this verse. I think there's a thousand things that you could do with it, a ton of different projects that you could make with it. And, you know, if you don't want the Bible verse, you can just use the beautiful flowers, or vice versa, you could just use the Bible verse and not the flowers. Um, Trudy says that the blue is her favorite. Yeah, I think it's mine too. It's, it's called Dusky Blue. It's sort of, um, to me, it's a, sort of a grayish blue with a little hint of a purpley lavender in it. So it's a really different color. It's wonderful. Dusky blue and sage green are Teresa Kizir. I don't know if that's how you say that. Her favorites. Oh, thank you, Cindy Gray. Yes, okay, so I'm going to hop off now. I am going to go wash my stencil and lay it on the counter to dry with the sticky side up. To wash it, I'll just spray it with some cool water, and if necessary, I'll use my stencil cleaner sponge and a dot of dish soap to clean off the top of it. I'll lay it out to dry, then I'll sit down in my comfy chair, start reading all your comments, and getting you information and answering questions. So I hope you have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. I hope to see you again tomorrow on Sunday, and then pretty much every day this week for lots more projects that are going to be quick and easy. Um, you don't have to be a professional artist or crafter to do them. You don't need any special tools. Um, they're going to be affordable. This was $3. <laughs> um, they're going to sometimes be a little different. Like I like to do things like this. This is a lunch bag and these are just eggs. And so I showed last week how to make this lunch bag nest and how to paint these beautiful eggs. I like to do stuff like that. Or this fun little banner right here. Um, so sometimes a little different, but the most important thing is that 95% um, of the crafts that I do here are going to be faith, family, or flowers focused. Sometimes with a little shamrock or a nest thrown in here or there. Um, is this black matte silicone? This one is not, but my regular one, which is dirty right now, it is a silicone matte. This is a matte that you can get from Magnolia, and it's one of those self-healing mattes that are good to craft on, especially if you're using a roller cutter. All right, you guys have a wonderful day. I hope to see you tomorrow. Be looking for pictures um, this evening or tomorrow morning because I'm going to continue adding something, some more flowers to this, and then I'm going to dig through my ribbons to see what I have that would look pretty tight around this handle. So I'll share all that as soon as I get it finished. Alrighty, see you guys later. Thanks for joining.